Diluting urine, six to one with two cups and two thirds of a cup to one gallon of water. Water. A disembodied hand again in a cup of fish and seaweed fertilizer and putting it in another jar. Now the hand is putting two teaspoons of dine and yet another gallon of water. water. A shot of topping off milk jugs filled with fish and seaweed emulsion, then dine and grow with water. Now a man is watering a urine test bed. Now the man is doing the same with dino grow. Yes, a fish and seaweed bed is being watered. In between each watering, the cans are washed out, but this is not a show. A milk jug of urine being poured into a drum, a drum full of dames, fed in swamp water. Few cups of Epsom salt pouring into the same drum, and now the man is stirring up the drum. Straining out solids through a filter thing into a five gallon bucket, then pouring the stream to your FSW into the water. Just bed with one gallon of Dave's bed, it's water. Then watering all the beds that didn't get amendments, each with a gallon of water of their own. Now the man, the very handsome man, sits in the middle of the beds and starts. Welcome back. The experiment is continuing. I've got some preliminary results already, which I'll share with you in a minute. But first, let me explain what's going on right now. Some of these beds already had amendments put in when we made the bed, like this alfalfa bed right here. This one here is just rye and peas as a cover crop. The one right in front of me here is a lasagna bed, biochar bed. There's a 10-10-10 bed. These are amendments that were put in just right at the beginning as part of the making of the bed. But then what you just saw me do was to feed the ones that are being fed with liquid fertilizer. So that's more treating the ground as just a substrate holding the roots and we are drenching the leaves and soaking the roots with foliar feed. So Dynagro, Neptune's Harvest, Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer, Dave's Fetid Swamp Water, which is still brewing away, and that's gonna actually change over time as some of the stuff in there continues to break down because it's a relatively new batch, but that's the way it goes with that stuff. And then um, we also had the bed that has urine in it. So these things there have been mixed, and what I decided to do was water the rest of the beds with the same amount of water that was in my liquid fertilizer mixes, so it's kind of even. They're at least getting the same amount of water it's just some of them are watered with the amendments and some are not. But we've had a little bit of uh, some, some issues here with some of these beds and I'm just gonna pick the camera up and walk around and show you. We had Hurricane Zeta come through which pounded and beat everything in the gardens. And we also have pretty poor soil with I think some pest issues. So this bed right here, the larger seeded seeds and some of them came up better but you know, all the peas came up pretty much here. But over here, turnips, looking a little small, came up. Radishes came up. But here, look at this. You know, one collard there. Where are the rest? I don't know. They're gone. Where are the beets? Well, there's a few right there. There's a few right there. Let's see. Look at those. There's a few right there. I don't know what happened to these. There's nothing there. And there's 
nothing over here. So we've got some skips. And this bed here, got a skip right there. This is Steve's mix. And on Steve's mix, the, the collards, it looks like may have skipped out. Oh, we got one out of five. And remember, I was planting a couple of seeds in each one. So they may have gotten washed out or beat out by the storm or something ate them before they emerged. This is not good because obviously this kind of messes with our experiment a bit. Uh, Dave's fetid swamp water, we have a very similar problem. Gap, 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 gap. Our first beets are right there. We've got a couple of collards right there. One collard right there. So we're missing three of our stations of collards. Turnips are here. Radishes are here. Peas are here. The peas are the only ones that seem to have done consistently well in every single bed. The beets, eh. The beets all came up here. This is the earthworm castings bed. And you can see, actually, everything in this earthworm castings bed looks pretty good. Much better than the native dirt. I mean, look at these guys. Those are some good looking radishes. Uh, well, let's compare it to the control here. There's the control radishes. They're okay, actually, but they look a little happier to me over here in the worm castings bed. But we still, let's see, can we skip here? Yeah, we're missing one collard. Biochar bed. Missing, look at these, these beets came up and then succumbed to something. Look at that, something chewed it off beneath the ground. That's no good. They look pretty good there. Something has knocked them over here. But they remember, they got pounded, pounded, pounded in a storm, which is not good. That may have had something to do with it. The biochar bed here is looking pretty good. I like the way stuff is looking in it. Looking pretty happy. Not bad. And not very many skips there. This is the Dynagro bed. We have beets, beets, no beets, beets, beets. And we only have two collards. The middle pea isn't looking so hot, but it's there. All of the turnips, all of the radishes are fine. A little weird, huh? The urine bed, we've got beets, 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 beets. One little sad collard right there. Another little sad collard right there. Peas are fine. Turnips, dead turnip. And one, two, and then maybe one that looks chewed up. That's not so hot. Cover crop bed is what it is. The alfalfa bed, man, that's pretty lousy. None of the beets decided to come up in the alfalfa. Don't know why, maybe uh, too much organic matter, maybe it got a little strangled out. There's nothing in the collard row. A few turnips. Even the peas appear to have been suppressed by the thing, I don't know. What's going on? Radishes don't look bad. And then here, oh my goodness, for those of you who voted on the lasagna garden, man alive. Look at that. These puppies are very happy. Looking pretty good. I'm a little concerned with how vigorous this growth is, that they're going to get some die off or rot disease or something. But maybe that's just paranoia. We are missing a turnip here. This pea is a little wimpy. And then you come down here, there is nothing. None of the beets came up. Or if they came up, they immediately rotted away or something ate them. So there may be too much biological activity going on in this soil. There's a beet right there. Little weeds coming up in the manure, but no beets. So I will replant again and we'll see what happens. Good, I'm seeing, oh, look at this, okay. So we've got shreds of beets here. 
which means something is living in here and destroying the seedlings, which is sometimes a problem with mulch beds. And then we only have one, nope, we have two collards out of five. Pretty weird so far, huh? Just really kind of missing a lot of bits here, but you know, we got hit by a storm. That's the excuse, I have no idea. Bad soil. I didn't do it, I know that I planted them correctly. We're just gonna have to replant all of the spots that are empty and see how that ends up working out. Take you down here and show you this, since I have you captive. We're going back to like 2010 style YouTube here, the run and gun. It's just I have a better camera than I did back then. <laughs> this cover crop is looking okay, and I was a little concerned you know, will these beans and peas and clover, will they actually fix nitrogen? Now, the clover was inoculated, but the beans and peas and lentils were not. So I'm going to show you something. Hold that thought for a minute. Right here we have turnips that are looking pretty good. They've been thinned a little bit and they need to be thinned again. This is three foot spacing. Not bad, huh? And then we have two rows of cabbages right here. The cabbages are pretty weak. Itty bitty little cabbages. And it's funny that they look like that because you come up here, look at how big that baby is. That's a nice cabbage. And then you go just a little ways over and look at that cabbage. So somebody probably had a burn pile there. Here we go. Two rows of daikons. Looking really nice. And there are mustard greens, which are looking pretty good. They're kind of outgrowing their early reticence. And I think the wide spacing is a big help. Over here, the onions got really smacked around during Zeta. But these ones are growing in Steve's mix. They are already starting to double over. These multiplier onions are starting to make side bulbs and shoots, little clumps. Look at them dividing. It's neat, huh? These peas here had the tar beaten out of them. They do not look happy. They didn't look great before, but now they look worse. These are the onions without any amendments. Now I'll take a look at this onion. And then let's take a look at this onion over here. Definitely better in Steve's mix. These guys are doing okay, but not awesome. The peas are not particularly happy. I don't know why. They may be missing their nitrogen fixing ability. I'm not sure. Let me show you something. You see the nodules? See those little nodules on there? We definitely have nitrogen fixation taking place. And I had seen, you know, I'd seen like nothing in the way of nitrogen fixers. So I don't know if they borrowed some of the bacteria that were on the clover and it ended up working out or if it was already existing in the soil, but turned out we are actually fixing nitrogen. We may get a frost pretty soon here and lose all this stuff, but this is just trying to get life in the soil. And even with the heavy seeding we did, look at how bad these look. <sighs> it's terrible. Man, I mean, we've had erosion. We've had them take a beating. They have been through a pretty bad storm and some drought. Still alive, but not what I normally like to see. But hey, you know, it's really late in the year and it's chilly out. Things that are going to grow are going to grow and some things are not going to grow, but we're definitely going to get some stuff and we're learning things as we go along here. We may have to switch more to lasagna gardens, but I also really like the way the biochar is looking. And we're going to be digging beds out of all this stuff here. And of course we've got to keep testing crops and I've got all kinds of other amendments to work on. But you know, stay tuned. This terrible soil experiment will continue and of course I'll be bringing you all along. So have a great week. Have a safe week, and I will catch you all next time. And until then, 
May your thumbs always be green. Handsome man.